Right there guys, so welcome back to the channel firstly, and I guess we've got to talk about Casado a little bit, haven't we? You know, did a video yesterday about the agreement and everything that came out, um, and the situation changed so many times over the course of the day. Now, I've held off making a video today because I've been of the feeling and of the opinion that we would have heard more and maybe had a bit more of a clearer picture of what we're going on today and it is now currently the time of recording 10 to 6 in the evening uh, English time, England time, British time, whatever and all we've heard today is we've had Melissa Reddy put a tweet out I'll put it up here and basically she states something on the lines of from a source that Chelsea have been tweeting a lot, or there's been a lot of tweets about what Chelsea are going to do, but there hasn't actually been any action on what Chelsea are going to are going to do. So basically, they're doing a lot of talking, but they're not actually doing a lot of things, right? Then, within the hour, we've had a tweet from Fabrizio Romano. Where if I just find that tweet again? Sorry, we've had a tweet from Romano within the hour that says. Chelsea are working on the Moses Casado deal right now. Understand final fee being discussed with Brighton is in excess of 110 million. Key hours ahead. Chelsea want Moses at Stamford Bridge tomorrow. And this has been their plan since last week. I think they'd love to have him there tomorrow, bearing in mind the whole thing that's going on with Liverpool. You know, put it in our face that, oh, here we go, we've got him, you tried to get him, we've got him. That I, I They would love to have Casado there tomorrow. You can absolutely you can see it now. It's written, isn't it? It's absolutely written. The one thing I will say on this is Romano's been saying that for about 24 hours now. The first tweet he came out with yesterday in regards to Casado potentially going to Chelsea was at midday and he said that Casado has just informed Liverpool that he only wants to join Chelsea. Casado has decided to keep his word and only accept Chelsea as personal terms were agreed since the end of May. Chelsea are set to bid again in order to get deal done with Brighton. Now, there's two ways of looking at this now, guys. So, it's either a case of what's holding this up is Brighton don't want to do a deal with Chelsea because they set a deadline, and if they're seen to break a deadline, then it doesn't really hold up any water in the future any future transfers doesn't it you know if they set transfer um, deadlines for teams in the future they're just going to be like well do you don't mean it because you didn't mean it with Chelsea or secondly Chelsea can't afford to do this deal right now and then there's, there's been a lot of talk about why Liverpool bid 111 million which has been reported instead of 110 there was reports of 111 and it's because apparently they believe that Chelsea can't afford to beat that bid due to financial fair play. Now, ever since it came out that Casado wanted to go to Chelsea, Chelsea have pulled out of the Tyler Adams deal, even though he'd passed his medical and literally all he had to do was sign the documentation and he would have been a Chelsea player. They've literally just within the same hour loaned out Kepa to Real Madrid and that they've got no obligation to buy him. So that basically is like... Uh, just a loan, so depending on how much of the loan fee is, what, five million? So that's twenty five million they've got from them two deals. You know, Tyler Adams would have cost twenty million pounds. So I think that Chelsea are trying to get raise some money here to get this deal done. I really do. But another thing that um Fabrizio Mano has said is that basically now that Kepa's gone, Chelsea are in the market for another goalkeeper. So how can Chelsea, if they're struggling to raise funded funds for Casado, if that is true, that fear is true, that Chelsea are struggling to meet the asking price that Liverpool have set, or better it, right? How can they then afford to then go and sign a goalkeeper? Now that all ties in to the Lavia situation, right? So apparently yesterday it came out that, I think it was Fabrizio Romano again himself, said that, Chelsea had agreed £55 million deal with Southampton to sign Romeo, Romeo Lavia. I f and I, I know that conspiracy theory and stuff like that, but you've got to take a look at that and think that they've basically tried to buy Lavia thinking that we'd pull out of the deal to sign Casado. 
which ties in again, sorry to repeat myself, into another situation, guys, where basically, why haven't Liverpool pulled out of this deal yet? Or haven't they let the public know that they have pulled out of this deal? Because ever since Klopp's come into the club, right, he's always been of this of um, the opinion that if a player does not want to play for Liverpool, don't come and play for Liverpool. We'll go get somebody else, right? Liverpool would not have put a bid in for Casado if they did not get some sort of inclination from the player that he would come to Liverpool, right? Now, I know a lot of people, especially Fabrizio Romano, are saying that he's chosen to go to Chelsea because of blah, de blah, de blah. I've now come to the opinion, and I've got nothing to back this up, I think Casado is trying to give Chelsea time to come to some sort of agreement with um, Brighton due to the fact that they, you know, he probably does want to go there first and he has agreed terms with them. And I think he would be up for the move to Liverpool, but only if he can't go to Chelsea, right? Now, that doesn't make me feel good about being a Liverpool fan. I don't want to be second choice. I would, if I was of any sort of power here, I would basically be like, right, fuck you, we'll go get somebody else. You know, we've had tweets today from um, Sasha, the Belgian journalist, saying that Romeo Lavia wants to come to Liverpool. He doesn't want to go to Chelsea. That's a player I would like. I would prefer to go get a player who wants to come and play for Liverpool rather than, you know, go play for Chelsea or whatever. So, I'm in two minds about it all. I really don't know why Liverpool haven't pulled out of this bid. There must be something going on that we don't know in the background, guys. There has to be something going on in the background that we are not aware of. Now... I did see someone retweet a tweet, retweet a tweet, from Fabrizio Romano last year on Boxing Day, or the day before Boxing Day, or whenever it was. He tweeted out that Gakpo wanted to go to Manchester United, and it was a done deal. And then literally, even within a few hours or the day after, Liverpool had signed Gakpo. So there is a history of this, right? Maybe this is all the agent filling in for Fabrizio Romano up. Maybe the agent's, you know, going to get a nice slice if he goes to Chelsea, and that's why it's being pushed. These rumblings coming from the Brighton end that um, they know that Casado's agent's not one of the best people to work with, that he is a shit stirrer in all fair, you know, to be fair. And how many clubs has Casado wanted to go to over in the past six months? He was hell bent on going to Arsenal in January. Now he's hell bent on going to Chelsea. Well, then he was saying he would he went to go to Chelsea. Then he said he wanted to come to Liverpool. Now all of a sudden he wants to go to Chelsea again. You know what, guys? I feel like I'm a little bit of the situation now, thinking about this whole thing. That even if we were to sign him, I don't want this type of scenario to come to us. Like, are we going to be in two, three years time when Real Madrid come knocking at the door? Are we going to be in this situation that Brighton are in now, where he's trying to force through a move? And he's refusing to play and he's doing this, that and the other. I don't know, guys. If he were to come to Liverpool, and it ain't going to happen, but I would want him to sack his, his agent and get someone new. Because he's, if you're going even from the club that he's at now, Brighton, because he's still officially a Brighton player, um, even they say his agent's a dickhead. So let's see what happens on the Casado stuff. Anyway, second half of this video... I'm going to do some sort of bit of a preview for tomorrow. Yeah, We've got the big game. We start off against Chelsea. You know, who knows? We might see Caicedo at the ground as unveiled as a Chelsea player. God, I hope not. But it's a big game. Big, big, big game is this. Even without that, and you know, with the pressure from the whole Caicedo thing going on. Now, they've got a new manager. We've got new players. And for me, guys... I f when I first saw these two teams, and you think of the teams, Chelsea, Liverpool on paper, you think, oh, that's going to be a close game, that is. But now that I've actually looked at it a little bit, you know, I think we this is the perfect time for Liverpool to go and play Chelsea. They've just lost their um, their main attacking threat in Nkunku, I'd say. They don't have Kai Havertz anymore. Lukaku probably won't play. So they'll probably play that Nicholas Jackson up front, maybe. Um, they've got Wesley Fofana out injured. They've got Baddy Sheila out injured. They've got... So their defence is a back four, which is used to playing in a back five situation. 
They've got Enzo Fernandez, who will probably be with Conor Gallagher or one of the other youngsters that's there at the moment. And then I can't think of it. <laughs> the rest of the teams, I can't. It don't even come to mind. Like Raheem Sterling, um, they've sold Pulisic, haven't they? Do you know, like they don't really have many players that I can possibly think of that can play in these forward lines. So I think we've got a perfect opportunity to go there and win. The one thing I would say though on the Liverpool side of things is. Even during pre-season, we've seen how vulnerable we are at the back with this new formation we're playing. So, I think, even though Newcastle Aston Villa's on now, and I think it's 1-1, it just popped up then, and that's probably the game of the um, the seat of the, the opener so far. I think this could be the, uh, the best game of this weekend, and I think it could be high scoring. I would not be surprised if this game doesn't finish like 3-2, 4-3 to Liverpool. Um you know, just to go over some of the facts here, you know, for Liverpool, uh, Jurgen Klopp's team lost eight Premier League away games last season, as many as they have done in their previous three com uh, campaigns combined. The Reds have not lost their opening game in any of the past ten seasons, winning eight and drawing two. The Merseysiders are unbeaten in 11 Premier League matches on the trot, with seven wins and four draws. This run started with a nil-nil draw at Chelsea, and that was the only time we failed to score in this 11-game run. And then the last fact is that Salah has scored in Liverpool's opening Premier League games in all six of his seasons with Liverpool. His total of eight goals on the opening weekend is a joint record in the competition, matching the totals of Alan Shearer, Frank Lampard and Wayne Rooney. So if Salah were to score tomorrow, that's another record for him, in all fairness to him. <coughs> so, I guess one last thing to touch on as well is... The formation for Liverpool. I think the team that started in the last pre-season game will be the, the side that we go with. I think obviously it's going to be Alisson. We're going to have Canate, Van Dijk and Robbo at the back. We'll have the two further back midfielders in Trent and... I'm probably going to say McAllister. Trent and McAllister, even though I know Curtis Jones are playing there. But McAllister had got a bit more experience there. So I would drop McAllister back with Trent. And then I'd go with Jones, Sabozlai... Potentially Gakpo, depending if you're going to start Nunes. But we'll stick with this team that started the, the game last. So you go Jones, Subozlai, and then you go with Jota, Gakpo, Salah. I think that's the 11 that he goes with, unless there's been something that's happened in training, you know, while, since they've played that last game. I can't really think of any... You know, you need, you'd like to get a bit of rhythm when you play players together. You like to get a bit of familiarity of what you're doing. And the fact that they started the last game, it gives me a bit of, of an inclination. And that's where we might go with this opening game. So, yeah, guys, that's this. That's that for this video with my little bit of a Casado update and the match preview. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I might be back tomorrow with the paper talk stuff, depending on what happens. If not, I'll probably do a match review after the game tomorrow. But either way, I'll catch you in the next one.